Hey friends, Patrick here and it seems lots of devs are confused when it comes to .NET 8 and Blazor, including me. And after this video, you're even more confused. Maybe, maybe not, because what I want to do is I want to compare .NET 7 with .NET 8. To be more exact, compare the older .NET 7 Blazor WebAssembly ASP.NET Core hosted template with the new .NET 8 web app template. And actually, I want to make the new template work exactly the same way as the old one. So you've got a shared project for your shared models, for instance, like the weather forecast, then you've got your client project for your, well, Blazor components, right? Your fetch data page, for instance, and then also the server, which is in essence a web API. And this is possible, all right? But in .NET 8, then you will also have not only .NET web API capabilities, but also Blazor server capabilities but more about that in the tutorial. I hope you learned something. And if you do, then I would be really happy if you hit the like button, maybe even subscribe to my channel. It would help. Please guys subscribe. Thank you so much. And if you want to support me even further, then maybe check out the link in the video description for my Patreon page. So to all my patrons, I love you forever. Thank you so much. And now let's start with the tutorial. All right, we start with .NET 7 actually, all right? So here, this is Visual Studio 2022, not the preview edition. By the time of recording here, we've got .NET 8 RC2 available. You need Visual Studio 2022, the preview edition to make this work. Anyways, here now .NET 7 and we begin with the older now Blazor WebAssembly app templates, all right? so. Here, let's just say .NET 7 wasm. For this little example, we hit next and I wanna show you the ASP.NET Core hosted option that we do not have now. It is gone with .NET 8, all right? At least with RC2 and I don't think they are going to change this. So let's just hit create and we won't change anything there. I just wanna see, there it is. What, uh, what we have here. So we have our client project, you know this probably already, the server project, the shared project, beautiful architecture actually. And when we run this, then we will see that we will make a web service call when we wanna fetch the weather forecast data. All right, there we are. You see, again, we have this loading screen here, right? So it has to download all the WASM files. And this is something uh, or one of the many things that .NET 8 is now all about, right? So you can choose between the render mode server, the render mode WebAssembly, no render mode at all, meaning a static server-side rendering. And in that case, then you, in any case actually, except you would set the render mode WebAssembly for the complete applications, meaning globally, then you would again see this loading screen, but otherwise you wouldn't, all right? I know it is still confusing, so let's just try to uh, have a look at all that step by step. So here first, .NET 7, ASP.NET Core hosted, the old stuff. You probably already know this again. Uh, I just wanna have a look at the network tab here in the uh, developer console. I go to the fetch data page. I see the loading text short amount of time and then I get the data here, right? And I can refresh this and we see again, let's do that one more time. Yeah, it's it's really, really fast, but let me throttle this. So it is a bit slower and then you see the loading screen and then we get a random data and here we can see the web service call. Great stuff. I love that architecture because I can check in the developer console what is actually going on. And when we have a look at the code, we can see that the weather forecast class here is in a shared project in the class library actually, in the server project, which is a web API and Visual Studio, I just updated it. Something is going on here, right? Uh, here in the web API, we have our weather forecast controller. Jesus, this is crazy. Shouldn't have updated, right? Again, not the preview edition here. And here we see the uh, get call and the syntax highlighting is also not working. Nice, all right. Okay, um, so what I wanted to say is that we just create some random data here and then in the pages folder, we see the fetch data page and here it is really making 
a web service call, all right, to that controller and then some stuff is happening here. So this is .NET 7. Now let's go to .NET 8. Real quick, big announcement. The .NET Web Academy 2024 edition will be open for enrollment in a month or so. And then you will be able to enroll and get early access to that program. In there, we will cover pretty much everything you need to know to land a job or get a position as a .NET Web developer, meaning backend stuff, Web API, Entity Framework, SQL Server, and also frontend. Blazor, now, well, server, WebAssembly, auto render mode, because we are using, of course, .NET 8. You will also learn how to publish or deploy your application with the help of Azure and GitHub Actions, lots of stuff. And if you want to be the first to know when this thing opens, then check out the link in the video description to join the waiting lists. Looking forward to seeing you there. And now let's continue with the tutorial. For that, I opened the preview edition of Visual Studio 2022. You can see it here, but you will in a minute. Because when we now filter the templates, and it's taking some time, we see, or you already see it here, we've got the Blazor Web App and the Blazor WebAssembly standalone app. For this tutorial, I don't want to have a look at the standalone app. I think I will create another one and tell me in the comments if you want to see this, where we build exactly the same architecture we got in the .NET 7 ASP.NET Core hosted template with this thing here. All right, maybe I, I show you how to do that. I actually haven't tested this before, but maybe this is possible. So I will check that and then we'll create another video where we can uh, do this. But for now, and I think this is what Microsoft wants us to do actually, wants us to use the Blazor web app if you want to use the new render modes. Of course, we can still use the standalone app. For instance, if we want to use static uh, web apps with Azure, for instance, but here and then you would only get the client project, no server, no shared, nothing like that. So Blazor web app would be the way to go for now. Again, maybe we can uh, change that of course here with this template. And you see that there is not there is not the older uh, Blazor WebAssembly app template. We've got the empty one here, but when we go to next, one step further, then you see still .NET 7 here, right? So this is the old template, not working with .NET 8. The only options you have with .NET 8 is the Blazor Web App and Blazor Web App standalone, uh, Blazor WebAssembly standalone app. I know, confusing. For instance, here you see .NET 8 now for the standalone app, but no ASP.NET Core hosted option, right? For that, we've got Blazor Web App. I know lots of talking right at the beginning and we haven't seen any or not a lot of code, but let's just say .NET 8 was them now for that project. So here, what we have to choose is again .NET 8, configure HTTPS, great, authentication, not interesting for us now, interactivity type. I told you that already a lot on my channel and in other videos, but let's go over that real quick. This means if you want to have interactivity, meaning you have a button or a form on your page and you want to make this interactive, then you have to choose now, do you want to use Blazor server or do you want to use Blazor WebAssembly? Server is using WebSockets, WebAssembly is using, well, WebAssembly, so it's downloading some files. And also means that it starts with a WebSocket connection, downloads the WASM files in the background, and as soon as you refresh the page or access the page for a second time, it is not switching on the fly, but if you're reloading the page, for instance, then it is using the files you've downloaded in the background. Pretty nice option. I'd say we choose that one, although I wanted to show you WebAssembly only, but still this works because the architecture then is pretty much the same only the program CS changes a little when we only use WebAssembly, for instance, all right? So let's just use auto here. And the other option that is important is, do you wanna choose the render mode per page or component or globally? Now globally would be similar to the older .NET 7 stuff, meaning if you choose server or WebAssembly or auto even, then the whole page works like that, all right? But more interesting, I think is really the per page component interactivity location, because when we now get this option to choose the uh, render mode, then I really wanna 
then have the option to choose it per page or per component. I think this makes a lot of sense. Include sample pages is great, but again, you see no ASP.NET Core hosted options, anything like that. Sorry, I'm, I'm tired again and it is late. Two young children is getting harder and harder sometimes. All right, so when we do this, we have this structure now, and this already looks interesting. We have this overall starting project here, and we have the client project. The files and folder structures are also different. Now here we have the pages and in the layout folder, we've got the main layout with the nav menu. I think this is great. They changed it and I like the changes. I, in total, I also like the changes. We just have to get used to it. But when you get the hang of it, then you have lots of flexibility. And again, if you wanna do it the old way, I think you still can. And again, please vote in the comments below if you wanna see a video where we create pretty much the same architecture with .NET 8 that we already had with .NET 7 in Blazor WebAssembly ASP.NET Core hosted app. But anyways, here we've got the client and the server project. And the server project here, you see it in the dependencies. These are the exact same uh, dependencies when you have a look at the frameworks that we have with the server project in, let me find it now, here in .NET 7 Wasm with all the errors here in Visual Studio. Because here now, Again, dependencies and frameworks, we see ASP.NET Core app and .NET Core app. Now, this means that this thing has all the web API capabilities. So we can create controllers here. We can make calls to these controllers. We are on the server. So we can also create our data context or our DB database context with entity framework, do stuff like that, everything possible here. In essence, great stuff. And additionally, and I think if you are coming from Blazor Server, then you already know this, and there's not a lot of change for you here. You also have all the Razor components here, your pages, whatever you need to, well, display your front end. And when you wanna add interactivity, you can do that as well. Great stuff. But now what about the client, meaning WASM, WebAssembly? If you wanna use that, then you have to use this client project here and create your pages here as well. For instance, here we see that page, the counter page. And by the way, again, just want to show you real quick. This is the preview edition, preview five, pretty new, I guess one day or for two days, maybe it was released. And uh, here now we can set the render mode. The syntax changes or will change with the final release. They said they already changed it with RC2, but it didn't work in my case. I don't know why. So this still works, attribute and then render mode interactivity, uh, interactive, and then you say, do you wanna use server or wasm? Sense not working here. I don't know if the update was such a good idea. Uh, oh no, it's not, sorry, not it wasm, it was WebAssembly, of course. Now there we are, auto server and WebAssembly. And if you have WebAssembly and this knows, this will definitely download the wasm files to the client. Now, when we run this, we can see that of course, and then I'm done with the introduction. And after that, we will change this thing here. And then we can see how we can make web service calls work with .NET 8 as well. All right, now here, let's turn off the throttling. Let's go to Wasm and hopefully when we now go to the counter page, yeah, you see that we download lots and lots of files. And when we're done, we can click here and we have interactivity, all right? So we're really downloading the Wasm files here. But what about now web service calls? So we now go to the weather page. This is the stream rendering in action with static server-side rendering, all right? So totally different stuff, new stuff, great stuff, but not what I want in this specific example. So this is an easy template here because it is not really showing how we can, well, fetch data using Blazor WebAssembly with .NET 8, all right? Here is the weather page. And as you can see, it's stream rendering set to true. Now this means that we've got everything rendered on the server. We see the loading text and when the data is there for us here with the uh, simulation of the loading time, 
then we get the data streamed or the new DOM, the new HTML stuff streamed to the client. Well, these are great improvements, but now again, you want to make web service calls. Well, what I did when I tried it, I just copy and pasted lots of stuff. So when I now go back here, I just thought, all right, so I want to make this work again with the client project and the server project. So what I have to do is I somehow have to share the weather forecast class again, for instance. Well, when we have a look again at the uh, project here in .NET 8, we see we have no shared class library. There is no project to share our models. That's really sad, but of course we can create one by ourselves. So let's just right click our solution and add a new project. Again, class library here. And let me call this one now, .NET 8 was a dot shared dotnet 8 it is and we're done we can actually remove this class here and what i now did is i just copy really copy and pasted stuff from the old dotnet 7 project and moved it here now another thing we need is a controller so again i just go back here and in the server project, I have the weather forecast controller. So let me just copy the complete folder here and go there, paste it here. We have our controller. Let's just change the, uh, the namespace here and that one as well. And now we do not have the reference. So what we have to do is we can add the reference to the shared uh, project in the client actually, because the server project references the client project. So let's just add the project reference here. .NET 8 wasn't shared, it is. So now we have the weather forecast here. And as you can see now with, there it is with this reference here, we also have the shared project here as well. All right, so now both projects, client and server, although it is not named server here, know the shared project so far so good and we have our weather forecast controller here all right now what are the next steps well in this example we only have the weather page here on the server again using stream rendering now i want to make this a web assembly page or component. Now what I could do is I could really say, now I want to use the WebAssembly render mode. But if I do this, I also have to move that file down here to the client project. And if I would use that code here, it wouldn't really make lots of sense because, well, it is simulating the call here and that's not the real call I want to see. And also we have the class here that is used. So, we need something different. Again, let's just copy that from the old project. So here I've got the fetch data page. All right, no attribute here whatsoever. So we can add this one, of course, but let me just copy this thing, go back to the .NET 8 WASM project. And now here in my pages folder, I just paste it. Again, we change the uh, the namespace here and one more thing again now the attribute so here i say attribute render mode interactive web assembly all right now you see we also have the http client injected here but when we have a look at the program cs there is no http client so we have to add this one next and how's this done well Again, we can either write it ourselves or copy and paste it from the old project. So here now we can just grab this line, go back and paste it. All right. Now, of course, we have to be careful here because so far this would not work. We actually also have to add this line to the server. I know it's not that great, but we have to. And we also have to add controllers here, make them work. So some configuration stuff is still necessary here on the server to make this work. But first the HTTP client, for instance, up here, we can paste this. So now let me just open that. 
and here we set the base address to a new URI, but I wanna, well, either set the base URL or URI hardcoded here, or we use the app settings JSON file. We can do that as well. So we can access this then with configuration and then get value as a string. And here then let's just say, we will call this base URI close the parenthesis here. And yeah, we're just sure that this thing exists. Let me just copy that. And here now in the app settings, JSON, we say base URI. And now I have to look this up because here in the launch, launch settings, JSON file, we actually see this file here under HTTPS. This would be then local host 72 and 40. Four. So let me just paste this right here. This should work. Double check in the browser. Yeah, 7244. That's the one. And with that, now we have our HTTP client ready. All right. For the server as well as for the client. But again, now we're using controller. So we have to add something else here. First builder services and then add controllers. That's the one at services for controllers to the specified I service collection. That's it. And then we also have to map them. So down here we say app map controllers. This one adds the endpoints for control actions. All right, great. What else? Well, the nav menu, because for now we are linking to the old or no, the new weather page, but I want to go to the fetch data page. So let's have a look here as well. And this is now called fetch data. And let's just call this fetch data as well, like that. All right. So again, this one here is the server thingy. All right. And here fetch data. This is the uh, page on the client. Let's run this now again, we restart the application. Here we are already. This is again server, right? So let's just have a look here. Just refresh this. Nothing going on here. But when I now go to this page, I see this call as well as the page here with no preview. But when I refresh this thing, I still don't see the page. Do I see it here? Nope. All right, so I have to switch again, weather, fetch data, still no preview. Sometimes I see the preview, but not today, it seems. All right, now I do. So you see, this is the result. Now, maybe you already noticed something. Let me switch from, for instance, the homepage here back to fetch data or refresh this thing. Have you seen that? You see the page and then again, it loads. Please take a look again. I refresh the fetch data page and then you will see that we are, we already, we see actually the table. And then after a certain while, we see again the loading text and then the data again. So again, let's have a look here. We see the data and now loading and then the data again. And of course the data is changing after loading. So here we had 22 degrees Celsius and now minus seven. Now let's have a look again. I refresh 38 and then it's loading and then 13. What the hell is this? Well, this is the pre-rendering. All right. So with .NET 8, you have to be very, very careful, at least again with RC2, because pre-rendering is enabled by default. So in essence, we're actually already done. It is now working. We have our skeleton, let's say, our boilerplate code to make this work with controllers. We have our shared project similar to .NET 7 ASP.NET Core hosted. We have all the .NET Web API capabilities here with this project and also the client with the, uh, well, the WebAssembly components. But now pre-rendering is enabled. And this is why I was actually looking for the, for the fetch data result here, this thing, right? Here you see that we actually see the complete data here because it is pre-rendered. But when we go back to .NET 7 now, and maybe we can have a look here as well. Well, 
is different, right? We go here to fetch data and we actually do not see anything here, right? We don't see the data. And this is sometimes important, but again, if you are already used to .NET 7 with Blazor WebAssembly, then you probably already know what's going on there and you have to be careful if SEO is important for you. Well, then you have to take this into account. Now, how do we change this? Because this flickering effect here is really getting on my nerves, very annoying in my opinion, and I don't want that. And in the future, if you're building Blazor server, WebAssembly, whatever, Blazor web applications with the Blazor web app template, then you have to think this through really, right? And in my experience now, after playing around with all that, you could really use static server-side rendering with stream rendering and the new form capabilities. I showed you that in my last video. Uh, with all that, you can do lots and lots of stuff. So it's really not that necessary to use Blazor server or WebAssembly in many cases. But more about that again later or in another video. Now let's let's fix this pre-rendering stuff. And this is actually pretty easy. Here we have the option to set pre-rendering either to true or we just set it to false. And uh, now let's just save this, run the app one more time. And now the flickering should be gone. So now we see the loading text and the data and we're here, we're done, all right? Loading a little bit and then we get the data. This is great. And when I now go to the counter page and then back to fetch data, I don't see anything. So this is what I actually wanted here for this example. And now this finally works as the old .NET 7 ASP.NET Core hosted. Architecture is similar, but of course we've got all the component stuff here as well. That's, again, this is now the big difference, right? But in the end, this is how it works. I hope you learned something. I hope things get a bit clearer now, or you are more confused. Tell me that in the comments, please. Would be interesting to know. And again, I'm planning on, of course, creating more videos regarding Blazor with .NET 8, for instance, the ASP.NET Core hosted architecture. What about this thing? Can we rebuild this with .NET 8? Another thing I wanted to show you is when you really have to use interactivity, when is this thing important? For instance, if you build an administration dashboard where you see some charts, for instance, there could be the case that you even have to use WebAssembly. Play it around a little with uh, Reds and Blazor. So this is something I would like to show you. Again, please tell me in the comments what you want to see. But for this video, this should be it. Again, I hope you learned something. If so, please hit the like button. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. This would really mean the world to me and make a difference. Share this with your friends if they're interested in Blazor and .NET 8. Thanks so much to all my patrons for supporting me. Check out the link in the video description if you want to support me too. And now I can only say thank you very much for watching and I hope I see you next time. Take care.